And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, November 4th. Thanks for joining us. And of course, it's the day after Election Day. A lot of races to cover this morning. Numbers still coming in this morning as we speak in the race for President of the United States. Our Sarah Costa is tracking the latest numbers and joins us live right now. Now, Sarah, what can you tell us about this? I hope everyone got some sleep last night because I know everyone's been anxious and waiting for these results. And it's been a long night and it, we still have a long way to go because at this point the race can pretty much go either way. And we are waiting on the electoral college numbers to come in from some key states. And here's that, here is how that is translating. So 48 states have a winner take all policy, but Maine and Nebraska split. The electoral votes right now, former Vice President Joe Biden has 237 electoral votes and President Trump with 211 electoral votes. To win, a candidate needs at least 270 electoral college votes. Now, some of those key states, like you're looking at on your map right there, that have not declared either red or blue, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada. Those are the way the states we are still waiting on. But the one everyone has their eyes on is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania could be a determining factor in this race. Now, let's take a look at this next graphic. This is going to be the overall popular vote across the country with former Vice President Biden at 50 percent of the popular vote and President Trump at 48 percent of the popular vote. But again, these aren't the numbers to watch. What matters is the Electoral College. But let's take a look at how Texas voted. Now, Texas holds 38 electoral votes. And even though some of those numbers are still coming in, President Donald Trump did win Texas. You can see that red check mark by his name there with 52 percent of the vote and Biden at 46 percent of the vote. The last time a Democrat won Texas in a presidential election was Jimmy Carter in 1976. Texas has been a Republican stronghold for years. Early polling suggested to some experts that it was going to be a battleground state, which Biden saying Biden could have a shot of winning. But of course, that did not happen there. But let's take a look at the pop. Actually, let's take a look at the how voters voted in Bear County. There we go. So uh, President Trump at 40 percent with Biden at 50 percent. That's 100 percent reporting there in Bear County. Again, we may not know the results for days, but of course, at this point, anything can happen. Just stay with us on GMSA throughout the morning and on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. More election coverage is coming up. But for now, it is a cool 49 degrees. Let's see. Let's see how things will shape up for the rest of the day. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, it's it's cool out there, but not as cool mm, as it has been. Yeah, I, did, yeah. I didn't wear a jacket this morning uh, I didn't either. No. And I mean, you still might want to wear one. You know, it still is 49 degrees, a little cooler in parts of the hill country. And also there's just as expected a hint more humidity out there, which is causing some fog. No problems in the metropolitan area. Kerrville just in about the past hour dropped down to a mile and a quarter visibility. And that's one little like little batch of fog out there. And then also off to the east, Gonzalez is now down to a quarter mile. So this early in the morning, we're seeing very thick fog just in pockets and that usually tends to kind of spread a little bit. So once we get in closer to uh, sunrise about 630 7 o'clock ish and just after that we may see that fog start to spread and get thicker in places. So 49 here in town mid 40s in the hill country and we do have a low amount of mold and ragweed. The humidity which again it's still not like you walk outside and it's humid out there but it's been creeping up a little bit. So we will have that patchy fog this morning. Temperatures will stay basically steady and then we are going to make it up to 80 later on today. That's where we were yesterday. Southeasterly wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. Still a very, very nice day. That's going to be pretty consistent throughout the rest of the week, but it's the low temperatures that will creep up a little more humidity and a warmer weekend. We'll talk about that and hopefully a chance of rain, but way down the road. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone at home and those hoping to head home soon from the overnight shift. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, Everything in the green, no accidents out there, so not too bad if you're headed out uh, early this morning. Uh, that's not the right shot, 37 in Carolina, and well, something seems to be wrong with our trans guy camera, so we're going to take over to Mark and Stephanie. Thanks, Marcus. Well, the election is officially over. Voting is at least. We're still waiting on results in some races, but we do know voter turnout in Bear County is impressive. Our Max Massey joins us live from the elections office this morning. Now, Max, we understand the official count came overnight. 
That's right. It came early this morning at 1.03 a.m. 100% of Bear County precincts reported, and we now know more than 760,000 people voted here in Bear County. But here's the thing. They actually expected a little bit more, especially a little yesterday. So take a look. This was some of the scenes from yesterday. Now, officials expected even more people to vote on Election Day. Historic turnout for early voting actually gave way to lower than expected turnout yesterday. Election officials had optimistically hoped 175,000 people would show up to the polls on Election Day. The final figure, less than half of that. Still, though, county elections administrators remain upbeat. They said voters clearly took advantage of those extra days they were given to vote early. We were out and about at the polls yesterday. And, you know, there were a couple instances, some human error things. But overall, we were told it went smooth sailing. It was easy. It was efficient. And we're going to tell you what they had to say coming up at 5 o'clock. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Max. Let's go back to the race for the White House. Both President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden picked up some major wins overnight. And President Trump is even claiming victory. But right now, neither is at that critical 270 electoral college votes. ABC's Faith Abube is watching the race from Washington. Overnight, former Vice President Joe Biden in Wilmington, Delaware, energizing a car rally of supporters. We believe we're on track to win this election. Biden so far performing as expected as the vote counts roll in across the country. And it ain't over till every vote is counted. Every ballot is counted. But we're feeling good. We're feeling good about where we are. The former vice president boosted by wins in traditional Democratic strongholds and the Pacific West Coast, taking California, Oregon and Washington. And in a surprise outcome, Biden now leading in Arizona. The state of Florida and his 29 electoral votes will go to Donald Trump's. Trump winning the biggest prize so far, taking all of Florida's 29 electoral votes and performing well in rural areas. But as votes are still being counted, Trump in an early morning speech falsely claiming he won the race. This is a fraud on the American public. Frankly, we did win this election. <laughs> The president also heading to social media and Twitter slapping a warning label on his tweet after he wrote in part, we're up big, but they're trying to steal the election. Right now, the cliffhanger appears to be in the Rust Belt states of Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. Key battlegrounds that could decide who wins the White House. Wisconsin officials telling ABC News they expect statewide results as early as today. With votes cast and nothing else to help the race, thousands of anxious voters gathering in D.C.'s Black Lives Matter Plaza as a nation waits for final results. So far, it appears young people did not turn out to vote as expected. National exit polls suggesting that 18 to 29 year olds make up the same percentage of the electorate as they did back in 2016. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. New this morning, a Bear County Sheriff's deputy is shot and killed a man on the far west side. It happened at a house on Gage Crossing near Tally Road last night. Sheriff Javier Salazar said deputies were called at around 7.30 last night after a man requested their help to get his belongings from a house. There was another person there, and when deputies arrived, they say he pointed a gun at them. That's when deputies opened fire, killing him. And time now is 4.38 and 49 degrees. Outside with live cam. Much more on your forecast coming up. And as we go to break, more election coverage. And here are some results of other races. For the first time in 15 years, Bear County Precinct 1 will have a new county commissioner. Democratic candidate Rebecca or Becky Clay Flores beating out the incumbent Sergio Chico Rodriguez during a July runoff. Clay Flores then battled for the position against Republican candidate Gabe Lara last night. She held a campaign watch party at a business near downtown. Our Devin Clark has more. Well, on election night, the champagne was definitely flowing here at Paramore. This is where a lot of the local Democratic candidates held their campaign watch parties, including Precinct 1 County Commissioner candidate 
Rebecca Clay Flores. A little background on Clay Flores. She spent some of her childhood homeless, but she did manage to graduate from Brackenridge High School on the south side of San Antonio and then go on to major in religion with a certificate in African American Studies at Princeton University and completed her master's in education at Harvard University. After that, she went on to work in education and nonprofits for 15 years. She hopes that her diverse and extensive background and experience will help her dissect the issues that plague Precinct 1, a huge area that includes the South Side, South Town, the Southwest Side, Lackland, SeaWorld, all the way up to Alamo Ranch. As the early voting numbers rolled in yesterday that showed her ahead, Clay Flores chose to focus on why she feels it's so important to make changes in Precinct 1. Basically, I was just really tired of my part of town getting left behind, so I really want to fight for resources for our community. Uh, one of my top things that I've been talking about has been breaking the school to prison pipeline. So that encompasses education, mental health, and economics. And Republican contender Gabe Lara called me to offer his congratulations to his contender, Rebecca Clay Flores. And Flores says that this is a position she is not taking lightly. She knows she has a lot of work to do when she starts in that new capacity in January. She says one of her first orders of business is meeting with other local leaders to understand what they feel the problems are that plague the communities they serve so that she can get a better understanding of how to make changes in her precinct. For GMSA, I'm Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 444 and 49 degrees for now. And as we head to break, we're gonna look at some of the results of the other races around the region. Forty-seven. Welcome back on your Wednesday. It is November 4th. So I know on the way into work, I saw empty roads, but let's see how things are looking now with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, taking a look at the uh, map, we are void of any incidents. Uh, however, due to some technical difficulties we've had overnight, I'm unable to show you any trans guide cameras right now. So from what we can see, all the traffic flow is moving along fairly well. And trust me when I say, yeah, just take my word for it. I looked at the trans guy <laughs> cameras. Everything looks fine out there right now. Light traffic, uh, roads are dry. Just watch your speed once you hit out this morning. Yeah, uh, we saw a few cars on the roads this morning. Had a little bit of company coming into mm -hmm. the downtown area. Yeah. As Mike joins us now over there on the cube. Hi. Yes, we were, we were trying to figure it out. Love working with the computers. And if Marcus can't figure out a computer, oh, we're all in trouble. Uh -oh. <laughs> we will take your word for it. Yes, anyway. Uh, another uh, fantastic Look, day there's, yesterday. There's a car. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get this guy some magnets. Put Mark in a rolling chair and push him around. He can simulate cars See, that's going something by. we would actually do. <laughs> and, okay, uh, it, it's another fantastic morning. You might want to grab just a light jacket. Um, we do have a little bit warmer temperatures out there. This was the sunrise yesterday in Bulberti. We're going to have another spectacular sunrise, although in some places it may be hindered by a little bit of fog. Now, we've got nothing going on this morning. It's a beautiful view looking off to the east. There's the, uh, by the way, the smokestacks over there at the quarry, and... I'll have to figure out what that star is, but okay. Now, <laughs> just in the past 15 minutes, look at how things have changed. We are uh, Kerrville's up to 10 miles visibility. It's down to two and a half miles visibility right up there around Bernie stage. And then also a little bit of fog is showing up around Pleasanton. So it's starting to move somewhat and thickening up in places. And it's still down to a quarter mile visibility around Gonzales. So we have to keep watching this obviously over the next couple of hours. All right, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere bone dry earlier, you know, a few days ago. Now they have, it's still on the low side, but dew points have gone up 13 degrees since this time yesterday. So the humidity, as we were talking about, began its its increase, even though it's still obviously on the lower side, and it will continue to start to go up. Maybe a little bit of a break Friday into Saturday, slightly a little little shot of dry air coming on in here, and then those uh, dew points will continue to go back up into Sunday and Monday. So. 
It's not as though it's going to be summertime humidity, but you'll kind of notice it a little bit more. Not quite as crisp as we go into, well, not only this morning, but especially going into the weekend. Obviously, nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture. We had a couple of clouds hanging around yesterday. Some of those high clouds will have some of those again today. And then step back and look at the country. There's nothing out there. I mean, little spots here and there, but just uh, we got that high pressure, which is dominating things, and that is not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. We will have some minor fluctuations, but there's no big, huge blasts of cold air coming on in here. We do have a small chance for some rain by next week, Tuesday. There is a, a front that's going to try and move through here, just sort of trim temperatures a little bit. Not a, a huge one, but hopefully it's going to squeeze out some rain. Anyway, today, mostly sunny skies, 74 at noon. We did hit 80 yesterday, going for that again today. And, and I think temperatures, there are some computer models kind of keeping them upper 70s. It's going for 80, sort of uh, on average around the area. And then we start to creep up a little bit going in toward the weekend, but most noticeably it's the low temperatures. Yesterday, you know, we were down to the low 40s and then we'll be around uh, mid 60s by the end of the weekend. So that's the indication of some more humidity around here and hopefully a chance of uh, a couple of showers by Tuesday. Still a very nice day. Mm -hmm. Just today. quite as fall. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still a nice string of days. Oh yeah, still great stretch of weather. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 451, 49 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. Today we have pick three, four, one, seven, fireball six, and your daily four, two, nine, two, one, fireball seven. Cash five, two, 10, 17, 31, 32, and mega million seven, 31, 44, 45, 55, mega ball 19, mega plier three. And back to election results. Longtime Democratic State Senator for District 21, Judith Safarini, getting a challenge this year by a Republican motivated by tragedy to get into the political arena. First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs Pastor Frank Pomeroy, who announced his candidacy almost two years after the mass shooting at his church. Let's take a look at the results in that race. This is for the entire district right now. Zaffarini with 57% to Frank Pomeroy's 43%. And here in Bear County, let's take a look at the numbers. Zaffarini with 53%, Pomeroy 47%. District 116 State Representative Trey Martinez Fisher seeking another four years representing Northwest Bear County, covering parts of San Antonio and Balcones Heights. His Republican challenger, Robert Litoff, who made an unsuccessful run at the U.S. House of Representatives back in 2008. Now let's take a look at those numbers. Right now we are seeing Trey Martinez Fisher with 69% of the vote and then his opponent Robert Litoff at 31% of the vote. Former city council candidate Liz Campos made it out of the Democratic primary runoff for a November shot at the District 119 state. Representative seat uh, currently held by outgoing Roland Gutierrez, but three others have their eyes on the district, which had been blue since 2008. A Republican, Libertarian, and a Green Party candidate. Right now, this is how people in that district have voted. Let's take a look at the numbers as of this morning. With 59% of the votes reporting in District 119, Liz Campos with 62%, George B. Garza, the Republican challenger, with 35% of the vote. In District 125, Democrat Ray Lopez, another candidate who doesn't have a Republican challenging him for his seat, but he's not running unopposed. Libertarian Tony Valdivia was a city council candidate in District 8 last year, and he's taking a shot at state office, and here's that race as it stands right now. We look at Ray Lopez with 80% of the vote and Tony Valdivia with 20% of the vote. That's with 75% reporting right now, 456, 48 degrees. More electric. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, November 4th. Thanks for joining us. And of course, we have a lot of races to cover this morning. We sure do. Things remain fluid, especially in the race for the White House. The race are, uh, results are still coming in for President of the United States. Our Sarah Costa is tracking the latest numbers this morning. Uh, Sarah, what can you tell us? Good morning, guys. And good morning. Can you hear me? 
They cannot right now. Okay. Oh, now we I can. Now hear we you. can. Yes. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning to our viewers and the viewers that are just now waking up. There is no final result at this point for the race. The race at this point can still very much go either way. We are waiting on the electoral college numbers to fully come in from some key states. So let's get right to it. Right now, former Vice President Joe Biden has 237 electoral votes and President Trump with 211 electoral votes to win. A candidate needs at least 270 electoral college votes. 48 states have a winner-take-all policy, but Maine and Nebraska split their electoral votes. Just take a look at this map. So what you're seeing are those states in gray. Those are some key states. This includes Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, which are we are still waiting on those full results, but the one everyone has their eyes on is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania could be a determining factor in this race, but let's go ahead and take a look at the overall popular vote across the country with former Vice President Biden at 50 percent, President Trump at 48 percent. But again, these popular vote numbers are not the ones to watch, which matters are the elector electoral vote numbers. But let's take a look at how Texas voted. Now, Texas holds 38 electoral votes. And even though some of those numbers are still coming in, President Donald Trump did win the Texas vote at 52 percent with Biden at 46 percent. The last time a Democrat won Texas in a presidential election was Jimmy Carter in 1976. Let's take a look closer to home, Bear County. Here's how we voted. This is 100 percent reporting. Biden taking Bear County at 58 percent and President Trump at 40 percent. Again, we may not know the results for days, but of course, at this point, anything can happen. Just stay with us on GMSA throughout the morning and on KZAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. Thanks, Sarah. More election coverage, of course, coming out throughout the day. But for now, let's go ahead and check with Mike about our forecast. I know we had a beautiful day yesterday. Yeah, it was absolutely gorgeous yesterday. Today is going to be another fantastic day. Uh, it's a really pleasant morning. It's not as cool this morning as where we had been. Of course, yesterday we dropped down to uh, 43 degrees. We're now at 48 and dew point, which is still very low. That bottom number there, 44, but that is up considerably compared to uh, yesterday. We've got that light little breeze out there right now. We are going to make it into the upper 70s right around 80. We hit 80 yesterday and we're going to be there today as well as the next uh, couple of days and the aquifer which it's been kind of you know fluctuating a little bit here and there but did go down nine tenths of a foot yesterday and as far as the allergens are concerned mold is on the low side and as well as ragweed now take a look at some of the visibilities around because we are dealing with and we'll continue to deal with some fog so Kerrville, about a half an hour ago, was down to a mile and a quarter of visibility. It has cleared out. Now, Bernie's stage was about two and a half just what, 15 minutes ago. Now uh, you're down to just three quarters of a mile visibility right there. Everything's fine within the city limits and within uh, most of Bear County, but that one little batch got to watch out for. And uh, also off to the east, Gonzalez, which did come up a little bit visibility, but we have to watch this for the next couple of hours. Usually it gets a lot thicker once we get in right towards sunrise, which is now about roughly quarter of seven in the morning. So uh, even a little bit after that, we're going to be dealing with some of this fog around here this morning. So patchy fog, chilly, not cold. Grab a grab a light jacket. I mean, we're still down in the 40s in most areas, mostly sunny, uh, warming up you know, 80 and also just a hint more humidity out there. And it will continue to get slightly warmer, especially the low temperatures, thanks to some more humidity as we go in toward the weekend. Maybe some rain way down the road. Talk about that in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. What's going on, sir? Well, right now, Mike, as we take a look, you can see maps still not showing any signs of slowdown. So that's the great news. And just to be on the safe side, we'll take a look at a couple of trans guide, uh, or not trans guide, but travel time. 281 from season four to downtown, 12 minutes. And if you're coming out from the southeast side from uh, 37 and 1604, also just a 12 minute commute. Eastbound I-10, if you're headed from FM 46 and Bernie to downtown, that's going to, or to 1604 rather, that's going to be about a 40 minute drive. You could continue on to the downtown area, give it another 13 minutes. Moving on to 35 from the southwest side to downtown, just a quick 13 minute commute, 12 minutes if you're southbound from up in the Live Oak area to the downtown vicinity. Marcus Stephanie. Thanks, Marcus. Still a lot of questions around the country. A lot of races have not yet been called, but here in Bear County, every precinct is counted. We're talking 100 percent. That's right. Max Massey joins us live from the elections office. Now, Max, what are some of the numbers that kind of jump out to you? 
Good morning, guys. The first number that jumps out, 1.18 million people. That's how many registered here in Bear County. And of those who registered, more than 760,000 cast their ballot. So for those counting at home, that's 64%. And that is impressive, to say the least. And that's in part because of the polls' extension of early voting. In fact, the early vote was so massive, it actually led to pretty small turnout on Election Day, around 83,000 voters. Many polling sites able to close not long after 7 p.m. because there were not many long lines. The elections administrator, Jackie Callanan, told us that made her job a lot easier. Well, we're all finished. It's going to be about 64 percent, which is wonderful. Now, there were a few hiccups throughout the day, some human errors regarding printers and the new voting system, handful of people not wearing masks. And we know at least one instance of someone refusing to take off their political item. They had to be removed from that polling location from a deputy. But all in all, like you heard Jack Callanan telling us, it was pretty smooth sailing throughout the day, guys. Thank you, Max. Been a very contentious race for both congressional districts 21 and District 23. Re the results are in. Republicans came out on top. The Associated Press declaring Republican Tony Gonzalez the win the Texas con 23rd congressional district over Democratic candidate Gina Ortiz Jones. In the case of District 21, Republican Chip Roy took the lead over Democratic candidate Wendy Davis. Arlicia Barrera is live this morning with more on these results. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's start off with Texas Congressional District 23. If you were following this race, you were probably on the edge of your seat until um, just a couple of hours ago. Gina Ortiz Jones and Tony Gonzalez really being neck and neck during this entire campaign, and it was no different election night. The AP officially saying that Republican Tony Gonzalez took the lead by 12,227 votes. That may seem like a lot, but it's a tiny margin considering District 23 is the largest here in Texas, stretching about 58,000 square miles from the Alamo City to El Paso, and then another 600 miles along the Texas-Mexico border. Gonzalez says he's put a lot of time and a lot of miles, about 70,000 miles, to visit the numerous counties part of the 23rd Congressional District. And you can count on me that I'm going to show up to me, this district deserves a congressman that is going to show up, regardless of the size of your county, regardless if you voted for me or did not. And in another race to watch Congressional District 21, another narrow lead. Republican incumbent Chip Roy wins the Congressional District 21 race against Democratic challenger Wendy Davis. At one point, Roy was in the lead by only 869 votes, the most recent count showing him in the lead by 30,738 votes with 97% of precincts reporting. And both of these races really proving that every vote counts. It counted up until the last hour. And since last night, neither Wendy Davis nor Gina Ortiz Jones has commented or made any sort of statement on their social media. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Alicia, thank you very much. 508 right now. We're also watching the state Senate race for District 19. Incumbent Republican Pete Flores running against the Democrat Roland Gutierrez, who is giving up his District 119 seat in the state house to challenge Flores. All right, let's take a look at the results right now. This is with 84 percent of the votes in Gutierrez at 50 percent. Pete Flores with 47 percent. Our Stephen Cavazos has been keeping on this race and has more. Incumbent Republican Senator took the seat back in 2018 during a special election. Now that was a historic win for the Republican Party and Flores, who became the first Republican to serve the district since the Reconstruction era back in the 1870s. But this election year, he faced Democratic opponent State Representative Roland Gutierrez, who says he wants to see another blue wave sweep through the district once more. Now both opponents kept a watchful eye on the numbers throughout the night. Flores and his supporters watched the numbers come in at Don Pedro's off Southwest Military, while Gutierrez and a small group of people, including his family, kept it small at his headquarters off Babcock. Again, Flores took the district in 2018 during a special election. He says it was a long time coming, but Gutierrez says the constituents need a change. We worked very hard uh, and for years, and uh, that paid off. 
the Republicans won this in a special uh, election two years ago. It's incumbent upon all of us to make sure that this seat comes back to our side of the column. District 19 is one of the largest legislative districts in the entire country. It spans 15 counties, covers 35,000 square miles and 400 miles of the Texas Mexico border. Now both had told had told me that they expected these numbers to take a little while before they came in and they largely because the area is so large. Reporting for GMSA, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 510 and 48 degrees for now. Let's go outside with live cam. Yeah, it's chilly yet again, but not quite as cold as we've had previous mornings. It seems like for the last week or so. So we've got a break. We have the results of other races around our region. Five fourteen. Welcome back to GMSA. Texans headed to the polls in numbers never seen before, and we have a breakdown on KSAT.com of how Texas voted by age, race, and county. Our Erica Hernandez joins us live in the newsroom with the details. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Well, this is the county map we have up right now that shows just how each of the counties vote is. Now, as we know, most of the metro areas like Bear County, Harris County, Travis County are blue, but the rest of the state, of course, went Republican. Now, as far as other key demographics based on preliminary results from AP vote cast by gender, 52% of men supported Trump, while 53% of women supported Biden. As for age, Biden leads with voters age 18 to 44, while Trump leads with voters aged 45 to 65 plus. The race number show that Trump was favored by white voters at 65 percent and black voters favored Biden by 89 percent and Latinos favored Biden by 67 percent. Now, this article has further broke down other demographics like education and community type. But another key thing you can find here are what voters in Texas are most concerned about. And the most important issue for Texas is the coronavirus pandemic. We have so much more on KSAT.com this morning, including all your exemption results. In the next half hour, we'll take a look at the balance of power map for the U.S. House and Senate. Steph, Mark. Interesting insights. Thank you, Erica. Time now is 515 and 48 degrees for now. More election coverage ahead as we go to a break. Another look at some results around the region. humans put yourselves through all that pain while surrounding those foot knives watch your blue light lanterns blast those eardrum bangers look at this one he's trying to pick up the mail ha! silly oh silly humans who do you think you are pain will bring you to your senses you cannot keep this up pain says you can't advil says you can when Panera's Chef Klaus makes a pizza, he doesn't just make a pizza. He uses fresh, clean ingredients to make a masterpiece. Taste our delicious new flatbread pizzas today. Panera. Home is a place to share with the ones you love. And at Stanley Steamer, we love homes. However you choose to celebrate the season, we're here to make sure that your home is clean and safe for the holidays. In today's tech fights, holiday shopping kicks into high gear. Walmart's first of three early Black Friday sales starts tonight at Walmart.com. The online sale runs through Saturday, then starts in stores. Different items will go on sale with the same timelines over the next two weeks. Apple unveils its new Mac computers during an online event next Tuesday. The new Macs will be the first to be powered by processors designed by Apple itself. Those will replace Intel processors that have been in Macs since 2006. Two new MacBook Pros and a MacBook Air are expected. Finally, a Norwegian internet company wants to pay someone thousands 
to surf the web. While watching baby videos and checking out memes, the worker will be live streamed on the company's social media channels. It's a two week job for $9,000. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. It's 520. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And right now, as we take a look, uh, everything still pretty good on the map. A little stalled vehicle there on the access road there of I-10, right before you get to a 410 on the eastbound access road. But other than that, things looking great. We are seeing uh, some of the trans guide cameras. We are seeing a little bit of, of haze, fog maybe, I-10-604 and also Judson and I-35 area. Thank you, Marcus. Is fog the trend around here for this morning, Mike? Well, I, I don't know if it's a trend, but it uh, it is definitely out there. And where it is, it is really thick. So you go up I-10, like Marcus was just talking about, uh, just out past 1604, heading in toward Bernie, and you're going to run into a really thick pocket of fog. More on that in just seconds. And somebody's getting musical. Here comes the sun. Da -da. Thank you. Wow, I've got backup singers now this morning. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, nothing is showing up in this picture as of right now. They're looking off to the east, of course, and there's the uh, smokestacks over there at the quarry just to get your bearings. Okay, now all of a sudden, Bernie Stage is reporting 10 miles visibility when just a couple of minutes ago it was down to three quarters of a mile. So this is what we are dealing with where it can be real thick and then all of a sudden go away. Gonzalez is back down to a quarter mile of visibility. So we have to watch out because these little pockets of fog here and there. And like Marcus was talking about, even there on the, uh, the northeast side of town where there is some fog that's trying to show up, but nothing at any of the reporting stations. And again, that's looking at you know, there's four spots, say, around town. In between those spots, you could have some fog in some of the low-lying areas, so watch out for that. All right, there is what is now Tropical Storm Ada because it did make land. You can see the uh, center of that circulation, but it was up to a very strong Category 4 storm for a while. It is going to continue to work its way across land, so it'll just turn into a, a tropical low. And then still forecast is that this thing almost does a complete 180 back on itself, just about making a big dog leg turn, heading in toward Cuba, becoming a tropical storm once again, and then also heading in toward the tip of Florida. And this is by Monday. Then some computer models have this going into the Gulf of Mexico and just sort of wavering around next week for a couple of days, getting picked up by a front and then shot off to the northeast. So uh, it does look like Florida may be affected by this, but not until sometime next week. And as it's looking right now, because we do have a weak front moving through here about Tuesday or so, so that's going to kind of set up the, the barricade, if you will, to shove that thing off to the northeast. Uh, 48 in town, it's 51 right now in Cutbank, but then 32 Bismarck. So we do have obviously some uh, milder air around here, although the uh, odd man out is up there around Caribou at 14 degrees. But the really, really cold stuff is kind of easing its way back up into Canada, obviously, and we're not going to see any real big cold blasts anytime in the next, uh, well, we're not going to see cold blasts around here anytime in the foreseeable future, put it that way. 74 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. We'll have some clouds around this morning, obviously some patches of fog here and there, and then 80 for a high temperature today. Same as we were yesterday, still a very comfortable day. Kind of notice the humidity a little bit more as time rolls on, and that will be the situation. High temperatures will stay somewhat in check. Yes, a few degrees above normal, but it's low temperatures that are really good uh, kind of measuring stick on the humidity when they stay in the mid 60s like that at the weekend. All right, so it turns out fog may be trending after all. Yes, indeed. All right, thank you, Michael. Thank you. And time now is 524 and 48 degrees for now. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, four, one, seven, fireball six. This is, by the way, with 100% Precincts reporting. Uh, daily four, <laughs> two, nine, two, one, fireball seven. And we have our cash five, two, ten, seventeen, thirty one, thirty two. And your mega millions, seven, thirty one, forty four, forty five, fifty five, mega ball nineteen, mega plier three. Good luck. And welcome back. We are still tracking some results for you this morning right here on GMSA at 527. State Senator for District 26, which covers a large part of Bear County, Jose Menendez does not have a Republican opponent for a seat at the state capitol, but does have one from the Green Party, Julian Villarreal, a former lecturer and research fellow at the UTSA, says uh, is, is his challenger. Here are the numbers as they stand right now. We've got Menendez with 80%. Villarreal with 20%. That's with 62% of the numbers reporting. 
And Democratic State Representative Philip Cortez has been the representative for a big chunk of western and southern Bear County. He has two challengers for that seat. Republican Carlos Antonio Raymond, who made a run for state senator for District 19 in that special election two years ago, and Libertarian Tony Quinones, a Navy veteran. So this is how things are looking right now. It looks like Philip Cortez is at 55% of the vote, and we have a Raymond with 41% of the vote. 528, 48 degrees. And more election coverage still ahead. As we go to the break, let's look at some of the results of other races around the region. Hi, good morning, welcome back. It is Wednesday, November 4th. And if you're just now waking up and tuning in, things are still very much up in the air for the biggest race in the nation. We are still waiting on final results in the 2020 presidential election. And here's a look at the popular vote across the country. We have former Vice President Joe Biden at 50%, and we have President Donald Trump with 48% at this point. But again, those are not the numbers to watch. What matters is the electoral votes. And let's take a look at those as of right now. 270 needed to win. And right now, former Vice President Joe Biden has 237. President Donald Trump with 211. We're going to keep an eye on these numbers all day long right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. And Texas has been a Republican stronghold for years. Early polling suggested to some experts that it was a battleground state with former Vice President Biden having a shot at winning. Now, here's a look at the popular vote we have uh, uh, in Bear County. This is former Vice President Joe Biden with 58 percent of the vote. And we have President Donald Trump with 40 percent of the vote. And this is Bear County that we're looking at right if, now. Can we go back to the state numbers? Because we, we blew we through those really it. quick. Yes. Can we go backwards? at all? If not, that's okay. We can move on. Uh, anyway, uh, we know that the president, all right, so there it is right there. Trump winning Texas, 52% to Biden's 46%. Key to note here, that's with 89% of the votes reporting, but the president has won the state of Texas yet again. And we have more election coverage coming up. We sure do. But right now, we're going to check on the forecast with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Hey, and good morning, everybody. One thing we're going to have to watch out for, and there's nothing showing up in this picture. Live cam over there, 10-4-10, uh, looking kind of off to the east. But we've been seeing some patches of fog around the area. And we got to watch out for the next couple of hours because, again, a lot of times it really gets thick right around the time the sun comes up, which is going to be in just over an hour and then even right after that. So we're at 48 right now. It's not as cool as yesterday by about five degrees. Still a light jacket's not a bad idea. 44 is the dew point. Still well below 60. That's always that threshold number, but that number has come up considerably even compared to yesterday. All right, visibility, metropolitan area, everything is fine. Just, uh, what, half an hour ago, it was down to three quarters of a mile around Bernie Stage. Roughly an hour ago, visibility is being reported at about a mile and a half up around Kerrville. But things have improved, but they can then go the other direction very quickly. And then we do have a lot of fog around Gonzales just off to the east. So that's the only reporting station. But again, remember, you know, even these areas in between could be a low lying spot and there could be a, a patch of fog. Marcus uh, has been saying that he's been seeing little hints of it up there around, uh, say, just Hudson, uh, 35, 1604 area on the northeast side of town. So again, watch out for that. 74 degrees today at noon, 80 for a high temperature. A little bit above normal, still a very, very nice day, but we are going to see humidity creep upward as we head in toward the weekend. Any rain? Maybe. Fingers crossed for that next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo with Time Saver Traffic. Well, thank you, Mike. And as we take a look at the map, still looking great. Let's take a look at a couple of trans guide cameras, folks. So there you have 410 and Gulliver Road. No problems there. And then 35 at Cesar Travis here in the downtown area, north and southbound lanes looking pretty good. But those, there's the hint of fog there. 35 at Judson. Just remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. People in many parts of the country are waking up learning the final voting results uh, could be days away from being finally calculated. In Bear County, though, it's a much different story. Dylan Collier with more on an elections office. I saw relatively smooth sailing. 
The early vote was so massive it led to a relatively low voter turnout on election day, around 83,000 people. Many polling sites able to close not long after 7 p.m. since there were no long lines this time around. Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan said that made her job much easier. It's been a good day. It, it really has been a good day. And again, I'm just so proud of Bear County. I really am from the voters to the election officials to you all. Callanan says the final voter turnout will end up somewhere around 64 percent, a new record. At election headquarters, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Three sales tax proposals easily passed by San Antonio voters. The propositions cover education, transportation and workforce development. Our Garrett Berenger tells us more about them. Two of the sales tax propositions are actually for the same one eighth cent sales tax. They just be used at different times. The one eighth of a cent sales tax in question currently funds aquifer protection and the creation of Linear Creekway parks. After that use expires sometime next year, voters have now approved it for a new use through the end of 2025 a workforce development program. The program would allow underemployed or displaced workers to complete certification programs or finish their higher ed degrees. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, who's been the face of the Proposition B campaign, says it will help 10,000 San Antonians a year. So this initiative helps bridge the gap, helps people get back to work by acquiring the skills for jobs that are sitting open, available in high wage, in demand industries. Um, and, and so I'm grateful that San Antonio invested in that bridge. That use will sunset at the end of 2025. After that, the tax money will go towards public transportation through the Advanced Transportation District. Even though they won't see that money for years, having it secured means they can start to pursue federal money. The third sales tax proposition was for the renewal of the Pre-K for SA program. That tax provides the majority of funding for the program and is now set for another eight years. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. After a long competitive campaign for Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3, the numbers are in favor of Republican candidate Trish DeBerry. Our Sarah Costa joins us live with more on this race. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, guys. I know a lot of early voters, so we knew these results earlier on. And DeBerry, she ran a race focused on small businesses, appraisal reform, and congestion. She says she takes much pride in her grassroots fashion approach. She's had throughout this campaign, having face-to-face -face interaction with residents despite the challenges of COVID-19. We've had our challenges and we've had our opportunities and that's all a part of the campaign. But at the end of the day, I think we touched so many people throughout this campaign and I'm all about running a campaign that is high touch, multiple touch, personal touch. That's exactly what we did. And DeBerry's opponent, Democratic candidate Christine Hortig, also had plans to help small business owners, transportation and infrastructure. As the numbers continue to roll in, KSAT will keep you up to date on our latest results on our website at KSAT.com. Back to you guys. Thank you very much. As we told you at the top of the newscast, still no word yet on who has won the White House. Several states are still undecided. CNN's John Lawrence reports. A baseless allegation shortly after 2 a.m. Eastern. President Donald Trump disputing ballot counting in the 2020 presidential election. This is a major fraud in our nation. We want the law to be used in a proper manner. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. We don't want them to find any ballots at 4 o'clock in the morning and add them to the list. Former Vice President Joe Biden says the election has to be decided by the voters of the nation. As I've said all along, it's not my place or Donald Trump's place to declare who's won this election. That's the decision of the American people. But I'm optimistic about this outcome. It ain't over till every vote is counted. Every ballot is counted. The 2020 presidential race coming down to a handful of critical toss-up states that could take days to count all their votes. It's those states that will determine the final outcome of the election. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And time now is 540 and 48 degrees for now. Go outside with live cam. One of the things making headlines this morning, other than all these results, we have some fog in the area. Be advised of that. Uh, Marcus and Mike are going to keep tabs on the roads. We'll have more on that coming up. Here's some other race results.
Well, if you're trying to catch up this morning on election coverage at KSAT.com, they have you all covered, including the latest look at the balance of power in the U.S. House and the United States Senate. Our Erica Hernandez joins us live in the newsroom to break it all down. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Well, when you're on the home page, you're going to select a green box about midway through that says balance of power. As it open up, you'll see a couple of maps of the United States. Now, this is a breakdown of live updates by state. Now, there are two maps, one for U.S. House and one the other for the Senate. Currently, the count in the House is there is 204 Democrats and 190 Republicans. As for the Senate, the count is 44 for Democrats and 47 for Republicans. There are still many states up for grabs at this moment as we still await results. Those states with no results yet will be marked in gray. Right now, for the Democrats to take back the Senate, they need to win a net gain of three and the White House. Now you can stay with KSAT.com with all the results as they are still coming in. The homepage is very user friendly and easy to navigate through to see specific races. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Erica. Time now is 544 and 48 degrees for now. As we've been doing all morning long, we are going to commercial break with the results of other races from around the KSAT 12 viewing area. Welcome back. It is now 548. And earlier we had one accident, but let's go ahead and check back with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, right now, as we take a look at the roadways, we're going to scroll through some different trans guide cameras where uh, traffic's moving on fairly well. A little bit of fog there and uh, 410 Culebra, but here in the downtown area, 35, Cesar Chavez, no problems there. There's some more evidence of it, the 35 of Judson. So just remember, reduce that speed. If you've got that moisture in the air, chances are down below, there could be some problems on those turns and curves. So general application of the brake and the accelerator, 410 and Callahan, so far, no problems there. All right, and we're already midweek, first week of No Shave November. We just want to let you know that our fundraising does continue for the month. Go to ksat.com for more information. And you guys stopped on Friday, right? Or as a Fri Saturday? Friday morning. Friday morning. Before, uh, you know, shave for coming into work Friday morning, but that was last. So. That was it. That was Friday, it. Yep. Okay. Sunday, so Monday. We're, we're, I shaved Monday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. No, starting to, it, it's your, anybody starting to kind of no, not it, yet. It's not, it's not bothering me yet. Eh. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, let it grow. Go to ksat.com mm -hmm. for more information. That's good. I understand we have some, I was going to say, some pets to be introduced. We do. Yeah, let's jump ahead say to Humane Some society. little furry ones, the one on the left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of gray in that picture. Anyway, we want to tell you about some pets, and here's the other little furry ones that need some homes over there at San Antonio Humane Society. Bobby was a three-year-old terrier pit bull mix. Look at this guy, and they're kind of going through. He loves to uh, literally walk himself, go to, uh, he was a transfer from Louisiana ahead of Hurricane Laura. Leo's five-year-old Chihuahua, the one we just saw, loves to cuddle, and oh, look at that big smile on that guy. Sorry the pictures are ahead of the uh, script, but... Uh, you saw the fancy sweater right there. Dashies, the five month old little boy, loves to run around, play with all of his cat toys. Not that one, of course. For more information, there we go. Look at those eyes on that cat. Beautiful. Head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society. Uh, their website is sahumane.org, located at 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 210 226 7461. One. Okay, it's so funny because that picture looks like, if you don't look at it, it looks like he's got his arms kind of around there, mm -hmm. you know, on something. So all of them are looking for some really good homes. Nice little furry friends there. Speaking of which, look at these guys. Pups Aww, got in the perfect. election day spirit. Keeping it positive. <laughs> look at the expressions on all the different faces. And I, the guy on the right sticking his tongue out. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. I like the one with the with his eyes closed, like he's enjoying the Somebody sun. Somebody opened up some beef jerky. That's this, what that this is. This guy? Yeah, he's like, like yeah. enjoying the sun. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, uh, this shot is looking good still, no problem there. And uh, high temperatures yesterday got up to 80 here in town, 82 Pleasanton. Going to be about the same situation again today, right around uh, some upper 70s, low 80s, and pretty much the rest of the week, that's where we are going to be staying. All right.
just uh, when was the last time I did a quick weather hit, maybe 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, there was nothing showing up in this map. Now Pleasanton is down to a mile and a quarter visibility and the fog has returned around burning stage. It went from 10 down to four miles, so it can just drop very quickly. Gonzalez has improved slightly and that's really the only spots that are showing up a little bit of fog, but in between some of the reporting areas, so maybe over in toward uh, Randolph. Marcus has said he's been seeing a little bit of fog around uh, 35 Judson up towards 1604. So just be on the lookout for that in the next couple of hours. Once again, temperatures, I mean, we're cooler than it is at Cup Bank, Montana as of right now, and even Chicago at 53. They did have a cold blast of air up there to the north, but most of the cold air, with the exception up there in Caribou, uh, is starting to kind of ease back up into Canada temporarily. And we are not going to see any big, you know, drops, uh, big plunges of cold air coming in here anytime soon. So all of the really cold stuff where the lines, those wind lines are kind of packed together. That's sort of the, the jet stream and really that dividing line between the really cold stuff and what's down here. High pressure is sort of dominating things and that's going to pretty much stay in place. Then we're watching this low in this trough to develop out here. But with this southwesterly flow, that kind of warms things up a little bit more. Heading in toward the weekend, we get more humidity coming on in here as well. But by about mm, Tuesday during the day, somewhat of a front's going to try and come on through here. Trim temperatures a little bit, trim some of the humidity, and hopefully give us a little bit of rain. But we don't have any big systems coming on in here, unfortunately. So rain chances, uh, this is a little, yeah, obviously still a week away, but they're not looking great. 74 degrees, mostly sunny skies today at noon. We have our clouds around this morning, as well as some of that fog. And then mostly sunny skies, pretty much a repeat of yesterday. Just a hint more humid. So humidity continues to creep up a little bit here and there. Low temperatures, instead of being in the 40s, will stay in the mid 50s, then the low to mid 60s over the weekend. Uh, a few more clouds hanging around here and hopefully chance for a couple of showers by Tuesday. Yeah, more than a few would be good. It would be good, and that would be our reward for the humidity that we go through, right? Right, if it would at least get squeezed out in the form of rain, but... Okay. Mm, not, mm, just, Fingers crossed. Right. 553, 48 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, one, seven, fireball six. Your daily four, two, nine, two, one, fireball seven. Cash five, two, ten, seventeen, thirty, one, thirty two, and mega million, seven, thirty one, forty four, forty five, fifty five, mega ball nineteen, mega plier three. Five fifty six. Our KSAC community partners want to help you get your flu shot with a series of drive through events this month. First one's coming up Saturday from eight to noon over at the Ferris Athletic Complex at sixteen oh four. Uh, near, on the northwest side, most major insurance plans will be accepted and people without insurance can still get a shot for free. Uh, you do need an appointment, though, to get a flu shot. We have a link to register on KSAT.com. Much more to come on GMSA, including election coverage, as well as on our website. Uh, you can find results updated live as soon as new numbers are posted. We also have the election live streams today at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. We'll get an update on the presidential election and many others on the other side of the break. But again, the word on the streets this morning is be on the lookout for some potential fog. We'll be right back. All eyes are on the race for the White House. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta, and I'll be breaking down the latest Electoral College numbers. After a historic election cycle here at the polls, we now know the official numbers. I'm Max Massey. I'll be back to break them down. And a cool but not as cool 49 degrees. We've had cooler weather the past few mornings, but it's going to be a beautiful day. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, November 4th. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're having a busy morning ahead of us. Weather and traffic coming up. First, the presidential race, the big race we all have our eyes on this morning, even at this hour. Lots of results have not come in, 
but it is uh, far from over. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with a breakdown of those electoral college numbers. Good morning, Sarah. Morning. Good morning. I, I couldn't sleep. Every two hours I was waking up, Me checking too. my phone. Me too. I think a lot of our viewers were there as well. But for those who are just waking up, there hasn't been a winner declared. And whether we will know later today or not for several days, well, that's still up in the air. But here is what we know so far this morning. Right now, former Vice President Joe Biden at 237 electoral votes and President Trump with 211 electoral votes to win a candidate needs at least 270 electoral college votes. Now, 48 states have a winner take all policy, but Maine and Nebraska split their electoral votes. Now you are seeing some states in gray on that map on your screen. There are some, these are some of the important states we are waiting on. Some of the biggest ones include Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, and Georgia. But the one everyone has their eyes on this morning is is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania could be a determining factor in this race with 20 electoral college votes. Now, this is the overall popular vote we're about to show you across the country. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Former Vice President Joe Biden at 50% of the popular vote and President Donald Trump at 48%. But again, these aren't the numbers to watch. What matters is electoral vote. But let's take a look at how Texas voted. Now, Texas holds 38 electoral votes, which are going to President Trump. You see that red check mark next to his name. Some of those numbers are still coming in. But President Donald Trump did win the Texas vote with 52 percent of the vote and former Vice President Joe Biden at 46 percent. Now, Texas holds 38 electoral votes, like we said. But Texas has been a Republican stronghold for years. You know, early polling suggested that it was a battleground state with Biden having a shot at winning. But the last time a Democrat won Texas in a presidential election was Jimmy Carter in 1976. But let's take a look closer to home. Here's how voters in Bear County voted, which is at 100 percent reporting Biden taking Bear County by 58 percent. President Donald Trump at 40 percent. Now, these numbers can change at any moment with Electoral College, those polls coming in at this point. The race can pretty much go either way, guys. So just stick with us on GMSA and KSAT.com. All right, Sarah Costa, thank you very much. The key thing, Republicans had a very good night in the Lone Star State last night. We're also running results there at the bottom of your screen on our ticker. So take a look at that. And of course, we have more results on KSAT.com. We're going to be tracking more throughout this hour. But for now, let's go ahead and check on that beautiful weather we're supposed to have today, right, Mike? Yeah, I mean, look at the start of the way. It looks like it has the best couple of mornings. We're starting to see the glow of the early morning sunrise already, and we're not seeing anything here in town as far as any fog, but uh, Bernie stage down to four miles visibility. Remember, it was about three quarters of a mile. If you were up early, roughly an hour, hour and 15 minutes ago, jumped up to 10 miles, no fog, and then now it has dropped back down. It's down to a quarter mile, Pleasanton, starting to see a hint of fog around New Braunfels. Uh, Officer Trujillo has been saying there's been a little bit up around 35, at least kind of showing up. There's some fuzz in some of the uh, the trans guide cameras out there as well. We've got some fog around Gonzales and those are the only spots. So it's just kind of right here in and around the, the kind of the middle of our uh, viewing area. So we'll have to watch it over the next couple of hours. We're at 49 degrees right now, 41 up there around Bernie stage. Then you look at the dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. Dew point is identical to the actual air temperature, so 100% humidity. Now that doesn't automatically mean fog, but some other factors come into play, and that's why we're starting to see some of that fog around the area. And uh, mold, ragweed are both on the low side throughout the rest of today. Patchy fog, it is going to be, oh, we got, you know, chilly out there. Like Sarah said, it, it's chilly, but not as chilly. And later on today, mostly sunny, warm about the same temperature as yesterday, but just a hint more humidity. And that's definitely going to be the case as we go in toward the weekend, warming up a little bit, but definitely some more humidity out there. We closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Time saver traffic. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything big going on, sir? Mike, so far things look great out there, uh, despite a little bit of fog that we're seeing in some some parts. Uh, the great news is no accidents. Now, from what we can tell, roads are still dry. However, if you are driving through one of those patches where it gets a little hazy, Probably want to slow down just a tad, uh, especially on those long turns and curves. Fortunate crossroads, no problem. Then 21 Nakoma, north and southbound lanes running smoothly at this point. And as we take a look at uh, 21 Hildebrand, those turns and curves, those are the areas that could give us problems if we get a little bit of moisture on the roadway. Mark and Stephanie.
Thank you, Marcus. The votes are in. The polls are closed. And in many parts of the country, the counting process continues. But here in Bear County, the numbers are final. Our Max Massey joins us live from the Bear County Elections Office. Now, Max, how did everything go yesterday? Good morning, guys. Everything went pretty well, actually. We now know more than 760,000 people cast their ballot here in Bear County. As terms of the smooth sailing, it was as smooth as possible. For the most part, we did speak with Jackie Cownan, the elections commissioner. Yesterday, she said there was a few hiccups technologically. She said there was a couple of problems with the printer to start off the morning in some locations. Those were fixed. There were technicians going around the county. And then we do know there was at least one instance of a, a voter who refused to take off a political item. They had to be removed from the polls by a Bear County deputy. But other than that, the election commissioner telling us it was as good a day as it could have been. And it's as good as an election cycle it could have been for the Bear County Election Commission because they tell us it is record breaking in terms of people. They say that actually because of all the early voting, they didn't see that huge influx of voters on Election Day that they had anticipated. They had thought 175,000 people would vote yesterday. That final number didn't even come close. Either way, though, an optimistic day at the polls. When we're all finished, it's going to be about 64 percent, which is wonderful. And guys, it is wonderful, but it is also a new record. We did have more than 1.18 million people register this election cycle and stay with us throughout the morning. We do anticipate a press conference later today here at the Election Commission. Guys. Thank you, Max. Let's get to another big race in the race for U.S. Congress. District 23 Democrat Gene Ortiz Jones, a Republican Tony Gonzalez, battling it out to replace Will Hurd. And our Tim Gerber has been covering Republican Tony Gonzalez with uh, he has again has 51 percent of the vote there. You can see the check mark by his name. Gina Ortiz has 47 percent. But let's go ahead and check in with Tim Gerber and what he had last night. It took a while, but Republican Tony Gonzalez finally declaring victory early this morning. <laughs> Gonzalez and his supporters gathering in the parking lot outside his Northside campaign headquarters to watch the returns come in. The candidate arriving after spending much of Election Day on the road, visiting 12 counties in the sprawling 23rd Congressional District. He said it was important that voters see him in their towns so they know he will be working for them in Washington. And you can count on me that I'm going to show up. To me, this district deserves a congressman that is going to show up, regardless of the size of your county, regardless if you voted for me or did not. Gonzalez putting a lot of miles on his personal truck during this election. He said it was brand new when the race started, but after today, it had racked up nearly 70,000 miles. He said after a very contentious race with Gina Ortiz Jones, the focus must now be to unite the district, and he plans to do that as he heads to Washington. With the Gonzalez campaign, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. And Democrat Gina Ortiz Jones calling the race too close to call. This is for Texas's 23rd Congressional District. Our Courtney Freeman followed Ortiz Jones and her campaign. Gina Ortiz Jones knows the drill. She has run this race before. Throughout this whole campaign, the numbers have been very close, reminiscent of two years ago when she went up against incumbent Will Hurd. She lost by less than 1,000 votes. That's a tiny margin considering District 23 is the largest in the state of Texas, spanning about 58,000 square miles from San Antonio to El Paso and 600 miles along the Mexican border. In a press conference last night, we asked her her top priorities, and her answer was based on health care amid this pandemic. This pandemic, though, an economic crisis, has only highlighted the need for quality, affordable health care. I mean, that was the number one issue in this district before the pandemic, and it is certainly top of mind for folks now. Um, you know, positivity rates in some border communities is 15 percent plus. Statistics she's been explaining to the public for over two years. For GMSA, Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And in the race for U.S. Senate, you can see that Republican John Cornyn is the clear winner here at 54 percent of the vote. And then we have MJ Hagar with 44 percent of the vote. And when it comes to the balance of power in the U.S. Senate, the Associated Press reporting there are 44 seats filled by Democrats and 47 by Republicans. We have more results coming up right here on GMSA, but there is other news this morning. A man in the hospital in serious condition after being shot in the back on the city's northeast side. Shooting happened right after one this morning in 2000 block of Dollar Hyde. 
Uh, police say when they arrived, they found a man in his 30s with a gunshot wound to the back. He was taken in Bamsey in serious condition. Officer tells they also found a few. Um, they also castings and evidence of possible drug deal at the scene. The investigation is ongoing right now to 610 49 degrees. And we have the latest on the state Senate race for District 19. Those latest results are coming up. Our Stephen Cavazos will have more on what the candidates have to say about representing the values of their constituents. And after the break, Eric Hernandez joins us in studio to break down key demographics of voters here in Texas. Stay with us. And taking a look outside with live cam, 49 degrees for now. No chance of rain, but you know, we're gonna check in with Mike that we might see that sometime next week. We'll be right back. Welcome back at 614, a record turnout for Texans at the polls in 2020. Nearly 9.7 million cast their ballots through early voting. All right now at KSAT.com, a breakdown of key demographics right here in the Lone Star State. Erica Hernandez joining us live from our newsroom with more on that. Erica. Hey guys, well, our AP VoteCast is a great tool we have on our website right now that breaks down all of the demographics nationally and by state. Let's take a closer look at Texas. As far as key demographics based on preliminary results when it comes to gender, 52% of men supported Trump, while 53% of women supported Biden. As for age, Biden leads with voters age 18 to 44, while Trump leads with voters age 45 to 65 plus. The race numbers show that Trump was favored by white voters at 65 percent and black voters favored Biden by 89 percent and Latinos favored Biden by 67 percent. This article has further broke down other demographics like education and community type. But another key thing you can find here are what voters in Texas are more concern, concerned about. And the most important issue for Texas is the coronavirus pandemic followed by the economy. We have so much more on KSAT.com this morning, including all your election results in the next half hour. We'll take a look at a couple of trending articles. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Erica. We also want to remind you about our live streams today. We will have one this morning at 7 a.m. and then another this evening at 7 p.m. You can watch by visiting our website at kset.com or just download the KSET TV app. Well, we may be a bit foggy headed after a busy election night. Let's see if fog's affecting the roads with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mark. And as we take a look at the roadways, folks, uh, so far we're accident free. Keep your fingers crossed on all the highways. Now 410 there at Quilibra Road still looks pretty good. Uh, we we'll definitely see more vehicles here in the downtown area. 35 at Cesar Chavez and moving up to uh, 35 in Judson. Actually, visibility looks a little bit better than what it did about 30 minutes ago. Thanks, Marcus. And back to school for a lot of kids today. Yeah, not, not had the uh, the day off yesterday. And as you are heading back to school, a light jacket's a pretty good idea. Um, it's not as chilly as what it has been. You know, we were down in the um, the 30s a couple of days ago. It was even freezing around Curva. That's not the situation this morning, but still cool enough. 49 degrees, and there's some uh, some patchy fog around the area. And then it's going to be another one of those days where. You don't need your jacket in the afternoon. We will make it up to 80. The sunset yesterday was absolutely spectacular, and we had some of those uh, high clouds kind of hanging around, and that'll be the situation again today. And speaking of the sun, oh my goodness gracious. Can we just kind of soak this in for a moment? If that doesn't make you feel, what was that? That your whale noises over there, Marcus? Anyway, <laughs> uh, we do have some fog to deal with on the serious side. Uh, Bernie is down to Bernie stage four miles visibility, still ho holding at one quarter mile around Pleasanton. The hint of it around New Braunfels. When you start to see kind of these hints, you got to watch it around Randolph and sort of on the northeast side where that tends to get a little bit uh, foggy sooner than other spots, also Stinson. And then we got plenty of fog around Gonzales. So it is kind of confined right there in and around the central portion of our uh, viewing area. And we have to watch out for at least about the next uh, probably couple of hours because a lot of times this fog does like to, to hang around even after the sun comes up. Now go upstairs in the atmosphere and we still have this really, really dry air. And so that's why we've had the beautiful blue skies the past couple of days. And that's gonna be the situation again today. So once we get rid of some of the morning clouds, what few there are and some of the fog, we will have plenty of sunshine, but like that, uh, the, uh, 
KSAT Connect picture showed a few high clouds out there. Nothing is really showing up on the uh, satellite picture right now. And yeah, again, there's just nothing out there. I mean, a little bit on the bookends up around uh, Seattle, the Pacific Northwest, and then up to the Northeast. But that's pretty much about it as far as anything going on around here. And there's not going to be much of any sort of changes coming about as we head on into roughly the next four or five days, except for a little more humidity. But Mm, no rain. Got to wait till about next week for that. 74 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today up to 80, right where we were yesterday. A few degrees above normal, and that's where we're going to be staying all the way through the rest of the work week. But notice the low temperatures that start to come up somewhat. That little more humidity out there and a bit more humid, especially going in toward the weekend, as well as the first part of the week. The low temperatures stay in the mid-60s. And by the weekend, we're going to be almost 10 degrees above normal. Same thing with the low temperatures, but then a front comes through about Tuesday, hopefully squeezes out some rain. Oh, nice. That would be good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 619, 49 degrees on your Wednesday morning. And we'll be right back. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. And welcome back. It's 622. Let's take a look at the race for Congressional District 20. It's a race that covers a large part of the west side of San Antonio and northwest Bear County. U.S. Representative Joaquin Castro breezed through his primary in March to the November ballot, seeking his fifth term. His opponent, Republican Mauro Garza, didn't have as easy a time having to get through a runoff in the primary back in July. So here's a look at those numbers. We have Joaquin Castro with 65 percent of the vote and Mauro Garza with 33% of the vote. We're also watching the state Senate race for District 19. We are incumbent Republican Pete Flores running against Democrat Roland Gutierrez, who is giving up his District 119 seat in the state house to challenge Flores. And let's take a look at those numbers. They are coming up here very, very shortly. Again, looking for state Senate District 119. Gutierrez at 50%. Uh, Pete Flores with 47%, and it should be noted this is with 84% of the totals reporting. And last night, both opponents were hoping for the best outcome. The district had been a predominantly blue area. Both Flores and Gutierrez felt they represented the values of constituents. Here's what both had to say. We serve everyone. We, we know... Everyone get, get got, every county got represented, not just one or two counties, and uh, and I think that's um, something that that people liked. I think that the people of this district have spoken pretty resoundingly that they want somebody that's going to be about progressive politics, progressive ideas that matter in their communities. The district is one of the largest legislative districts in the country, spanning 15 counties, including parts of the Texas-Mexico border. Another state race grabbing attention last night. Freshman state rep for District 121 Republican Steve Allison facing a strong challenge for his first reelection campaign. Democrat Selena Montoya, who had made a big push to drum up support over the past few weeks. And let's take a look at the numbers in that race. Allison wins it 54 percent to Montoya's 46 percent. That's with 94 percent reporting. And District 28 has been held by the Democrats for decades. It reaches down from the suburbs of San Antonio to the border with Mexico and includes Mission and Laredo. Congressman Henry Cuellar has been on the job since 2005, easily winning, winning re-election every two years. Now, this year, term limit advocate and Republican Sandra Witten has set her sights on that seat. So let's look at those results. We have Henry Cuellar, the winner there at 55 percent, and Sandra Witten with 42 percent. And let's move to Congressional District 35, Democrat Lloyd Doggett, representing the district since first taking office in 1995. He has defeated all challengers this time around. It's Republican Jenny Garcia Sharon, who advanced to the November ballot after a primary runoff contest. And there are the results right there. We have Lloyd Doggett with 65 percent of the vote winning that race and Jenny Garcia Sharon with 30 percent of the vote. Right now, 625, 49 degrees. And ahead in our next half hour, what you need to know about the balance of power in our country. Plus, what does it mean to wake up without a winner of the presidential election? We're going to break it all down for you. And Trans Guy, the sun is starting to come up. We've got some fog out there. Mike and Marcus will get us up to speed after the break.
Several major Senate and House races will determine who controls Congress for the next two years. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta breaking down the latest seat numbers. In the race for District 23, they were neck and neck during the campaign and remain like that until just a couple of hours ago. Republican candidate Tony Gonzalez and Democratic candidate Gina Ortiz Jones gave it their all. But who came up on top? The results just ahead here on GMSA. And outside with live cam, fog settling in in many parts of the KSAT 12 viewing area. As you take a look at downtown, we've got a midweek forecast coming up. And good morning. It is Wednesday, November 4th, the day after Election Day. Well, most of the tension, uh, tension rather, today on the race for president between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. But those two aren't the only ones on the ballot. Several major Senate and House races will determine who controls the Congress for the next two years. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio this morning with the latest numbers. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. It's definitely a race you want to keep your eyes on. You know, currently, we know the U.S. House representatives held by the Democrats, led by Nancy Pelosi, and Republicans have held the U.S. Senate with Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. But let's take a look at the latest results this morning. You look at your screen, you are seeing the latest numbers for the U.S. House of Representatives with the Democrats at 180 seats and the Republicans at 181. This is still incredibly close and it's too close to call who will take the majority. There are a total of 435 seats in the House. There are currently still 66 seats that have not been decided. Now the majority to take the majority in the House, a party needs more than 218 seats. Even though this has not been decided and we may not know for several days, similar to the presidential election, last night Nancy Pelosi said that the Democrats will continue to have the majority again. It's still to be determined. Now let's take a look at the Senate. The most up-to-date numbers say Democrats have 45 seats in the Senate and Republicans at 47, eight seats have still not been decided. Now, for the majority, a party needs 51 seats in the Senate. If there is a tie, the vice president has a deciding vote, which of course would mean we wouldn't know who will take the majority in the Senate until the president election is decided. We will be breaking down these numbers more in depth in our live stream that begins after GMSA at 7 a.m. So just stay with us. All right. Thank you very much, Sarah Costa. And just to tune you in here, hate to bury the lead, but obviously the presidential election very much up in the air this morning. Some key states, including Pennsylvania, still not in. So we're waiting for those numbers and we all continue to be wait. We're just going to have to be patient. Well, for now here locally, let's go ahead and check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo to see how things are looking on the roads. And right now, as you take a look at the map, you can see, fortunately, still a missing accident. So that's great news. Hopefully, they'll stay away for the entire morning commute. Let's take a look at a couple of TransGuide cameras right now. 410 at Crossroads. You can see traffic moving along fairly well up there on the northwest side with no problems. 21 for the north or the southbound lanes there. Also, take a look here. 21 at Hildebrand. Things around that, the traffic around that, those turns and curves so far moving nicely. Mike? Sir, and just looking at some of those cameras, everything looks very good. Looking at this shot, I mean, just absolutely beautiful. Sun's going to be coming up in about uh, 15 minutes, uh, roughly. Obviously, the early morning low. Now, right off the top of this half hour, that uh, live cam view from Brook City Base looking north toward town, you can see it almost looks kind of fuzzy in places. We do have a temperature of 49 degrees right now, which, yeah, it's cool out there. Relatively speaking, there's a lot of humidity, although dew points are still well below 60, but relative to that number. So maybe kind of a dampish cool and also some fog. Now, once again, just uh, Bernie is back down to three quarters of a mile visibility. It was at four miles roughly um, 10, 15 minutes ago. Pleasanton is down to a quarter mile visibility and we still have a hint of fog around New Braunfels. So those two spots very thick. If you're going out I 10 going down 37, you are going to run into some of that fog and heading out 10. You'll run into a little bit of fog as well, but visibility has improved slightly Gonzalez somewhere around the grain. So we have to keep watching this for at least, uh, I guess, the next hour, hour and a half, uh, because it will stick around even after sun comes up. Mold ragweed are both on the low side this morning, and we've got that patchy fog. Again, it's not as cold as it has been the past few mornings, but it's uh, sort of a dampish chilly out there. So a light jacket's a pretty good idea. You won't need it this afternoon because it is going to be warming up 80 once again. And then the next couple of days, it will be a little bit warmer. Now, high temperatures aren't going to just be extreme, although we will be close to 10 degrees above normal. We'll stay about low 80s. 
There's going to be some more humidity out there. Any rain to be had? We will check that out. Maybe something next week. That's coming up in a little bit. Stephanie, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A race to watch and the results are in. Republicans coming out on top in Texas's 23rd congressional district. The Associated Press declaring Republican Tony Gonzalez the winner over Democratic candidate Gina Ortiz Jones. Our Alicia Barrera is live with those numbers. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, Tony Gonzalez and his team were very confident about their lead, even celebrating before that official announcement came. Ortiz Jones saying it was too close to call, but those final numbers did come in. They were announced around 2.40 this morning by the Associated Press. And these numbers, according to them, Republican Tony Gonzalez took the lead by slightly over 12,000 votes. And that really may seem like a big difference, but it's really a tiny margin considering how big District 20 three is. It's the largest in Texas and it stretches about 58,000 square miles from Alamo City to El Paso and then another 600 miles along the Texas Mexico border. Gonzalez says he's put a lot of time and of course a lot of miles, 70,000 miles to visit the number, the numerous counties part of the 23rd congressional district and this race really kept voters on the edge of their seats all night again even into the the early hours of this morning and as of now Jones has not released a latest statement on those final numbers reporting Alicia Barrera KSAT 12 news Thank you, Alicia. People around the country are waking up with lots of questions as counties around the country are still adding up votes. But here in Bear County, 100% of precincts have reported in. Our Max Massey joins us live from the Bear County Elections Office. Now, Max, what is that final vote count here? Well, we got that final vote count at about 1.03 a.m. this morning. That is when 100% of the precincts here in the county reported. We now know more than 760,000 people voted more than 1.18 million people registered, so that's about 64%. So let's take a look at what those poll lines looked like just yesterday. A historic turnout for early voting actually gave way to lower than expected turnout on Election Day. Election officials had optimistically hoped 175,000 people would show up at the polls on Election Day yesterday. The final figure, though, less than half of that. Still, county elections administrators they remained upbeat. They said voters clearly took advantage of those extra days of voting early. It's been a good day. It, it really has been a good day. And again, I'm just so proud of Bear County. I really am from the voters to the election officials to you all. Uh, the early vote was so massive, it led to a pretty small turnout yesterday. Only around 83,000 voters. A lot of polling sites able to close not long after 7 p.m. since there really weren't too many lines around the city, around the county. And we spoke with Jackie Cowan yesterday. She said, for the most part, smooth sailing, a few hiccups. But as you heard her, very proud of all the voters and all of the officials. Guys. Max Massey, thank you. Texas remains red in many areas, including the con Congressional District 21. Incumbent Republican Chip Roy defeated Democratic challenger Wendy Davis with 52 percent of the votes, but it was a close call. Let's take a look at those numbers right now. Again, Chip Roy there with 52 percent of the vote and Democratic challenger Wendy Davis with 45 percent of the vote. Now to Precinct 3 Commissioner's Court race. Republican Trish DeBerry made a run at the race mayor's office back in 2009 night against Julian Castro, Democrat Christine Hordick, an attorney and president of the Bear County Children's Court Attorney Association. Our Japhne Gray checked in with the candidates last night and has more on that race. The early vote was so massive it led to a relatively low voter turnout on Election Day, around 83,000 people. Many polling sites able to close not long after 7 p.m. since there were no long lines this time around. Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan said that made her job much easier. It's been a good day. It, it really has been a good day. And again, I'm just so proud of Bear County. I really am from the voters to the election officials to you all. Callanan says the final voter turnout will end up somewhere around 64 percent, a new record. At election headquarters, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Well, for the first time in 15 years, Precinct 1 will have a new county commissioner. Democratic candidate Rebecca or Becky Clay Flores beating out the incumbent Sergio Chico Rodriguez during a July runoff. Clay Flores then battled for the position against Republican Gabe Lara. Last night, she held a campaign watch party at a business near downtown. Devin Clark has more. 
Well, on election night, the champagne was definitely flowing here at Paramore. This is where a lot of the local Democratic candidates held their campaign watch parties, including Precinct 1 County Commissioner candidate Rebecca Clay Flores. A little background on Clay Flores. She spent some of her childhood homeless, but she did manage to graduate from Brackenridge High School on the south side of San Antonio and then go on to major in religion with a certificate in African American Studies at Princeton University and completed her master's in education at Harvard University. After that, she went on to work in education and nonprofits for 15 years. She hopes that her diverse and extensive background and experience will help her dissect the issues that plague Precinct 1, a huge area that includes the South Side, South Town, the Southwest Side, Lackland, SeaWorld, all the way up to Alamo Ranch. As the early voting numbers rolled in yesterday that showed her ahead, Clay Flores chose to focus on why she feels it's so important to make changes in Precinct 1. Basically, I was just really tired of my part of town getting left behind, so I really want to fight for resources for our community. Uh, one of my top things that I've been talking about has been breaking the school to prison pipeline. So that encompasses education, mental health, and economics. And Republican contender Gabe Lara called me to offer his congratulations to his contender, Rebecca Clay Flores. And Flores says that this is a position she is not taking lightly. She knows she has a lot of work to do when she starts in that new capacity in January. She says one of her first orders of business is meeting with other local leaders to understand what they feel the problems are that plague the communities they serve so that she can get a better understanding of how to make changes in her precinct. For GMSA, I'm Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's check on some of those other major Bear County races. Sheriff Javier Salazar seeking a second term, running against Republican Jerry Rickoff, former Bear County clerk. And here are the numbers in that race. With 100% reporting, Salazar wins handily 62% to Rickoff's 38%. Pre-K for SA once again won the support of San Antonio voters. The program is best known for offering full day pre-K at its four education centers around the city. Most of its students attend for free. Voters approved another eight years for the one eighth of a cent sales tax, which provides most of the program's funding. Well, it says that San Antonio really believes in pre-K for SA and that we've proven that we're a successful program and everybody knows that and they're voting yes to say more investment in early learning. So very excited about that. And voters also approved reallocating a separate one eighth of a cent sales tax for a workforce development program through 2025, then for public transportation beginning in 2026. 641, 49 degrees. And right now on KSAT.com, we have all the information you need to know about the elections from the presidential race to the latest results on the local races here in Bear County. Our Erica Hernandez will give us a look on what you can find on our website still ahead. And welcome back at 645 right now on KSET.com. Not only do we have your election results, but we have new articles trending this morning. Erica Hernandez gives us a look live from the newsroom. Erica, good morning. Good morning. Well, there's no winner in the presidential race, and that's okay. This article explains why. In a year turned upside down by the coronavirus pandemic, many states made it easier to vote by mail, and mi millions chose to do so. That means a slowdown in the tabulation of results because votes received by mail often take longer to process. Also, the closer to the margin in a state is, the more the votes are needed for the Associated Press to declare a winner. The delay doesn't signify a positive for one or the other. Now, as we await to see the final results, so is the rest of the world. World leaders generally refrained from commenting on the outcome until it was clear, but the presidential race was already sparking concerns overseas this, that the sharp divisions and internal conflicts exposed by the election might endure long after the winner is declared. In financial markets, investors struggle to make sense of it all, sending some indexes up and others down. Overall, traditional U.S. allies are clinging to the belief that regardless of whether Trump or Biden emerged as the winner, the fundamentals of America's key relationships would survive the uncertainty. We have so much more you can sift through on our website right now. And don't forget, we still have two live streams today, one after the show and the other this evening at 7. Mark, Steph. Thank, Thank you, Erica. Thank you.
No Shave November continues. We are well on our way to a very hairy week right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let it grow. Join the fight against cancer. Uh, the link to donate to our team is on ksat.com. And if I recall, you have to click on individual people to donate. So uh, feel free to, to donate to me, Marcus, Mike, anybody. That's the biggest hint, hint I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> to to, to, to yes. donate? Yeah. yeah. By, we by have individual links. By all yes. means. Feel Which free to like begging for votes. Right. <laughs> feel free to donate on uh, for Marcus, Officer Trujillo, or Officer Marcus Trujillo, any one of those three. Yes. Right, see, exactly. Yeah, that is so subtle. I need to, I need to work on that. <laughs> yes. Since Marcus is talking, let's mm -hmm. let him keep going. <laughs> and right now, the traffic looks pretty good out there, so we're going to move around to different trans guide cameras, uh, show you I-10, 1604 area. No problems there. 410 in Callahan, starting to pick up in volume on those eastbound main lanes. Westbound, not so bad. And then the interchange I-10, 410, so far, looking pretty good. No matter who you oh, there we go. Uh, right. donate to, though, yes. the money all goes to the same It would be place. best if it was me, but <laughs> all that money then goes to, obviously, the awareness yes. of cancers in men and St. Jude. St. Uh, Jude, uh, Fight Colorectal, and yeah. another cancer foundation. But they're right. on, uh, yeah, we've got more of that info on ksat.com. Yes. And you have all month to do this. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to go get ready for but our live stream. Today. What? But do it today. Do it yes. today. Because yeah. you'll forget. We're going to go get ready for our live stream. Mm -hmm. You guys are large and in charge. Yep. Bye. <laughs> wow. Left us in charge, Marcus. There we go. <laughs> hey, look at this picture yesterday. The sunset and that little bit of a wisp up there with the contrail of a jet flying over. Beautiful. We've got a lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, and that's why we've got, okay, we haven't seen this yet. There's the perfect little, just that, mm, kind of coming above the horizon. Notice how there's a little bit of fuzz, though, right there along the horizon. We've got the humidity is now you walk outside. It's not like you sweat, obviously, but relative to the temperatures, the humidity is fairly high this morning, and so that's what's causing some fog. So three quarters of mile visibility. Bernie Pleasanton just what? 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, was down to a quarter mile. Now it's up to four. So obviously it's going back and forth. We'll still have to be dealing with some patches of fog over the next uh, couple of hours elsewhere. It's not bad, but just kind of be on the lookout, especially low-lying areas. And then Gonzales, some fog is being reported, and that's pretty much about it. 49 degrees in town, 45 Port SA. Cool, below normal, but not as chilly as it has been the past couple of mornings. And then you look at these dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Bernie stage, the air temperature was 41, and so was the dew point temperature. So 100% humidity. That doesn't automatically mean fog, but obviously that's a big contributing factor to that fog. We've got some clear skies, obviously, some very, very light wind on top of that. And what's interesting, too, is dew points have gone up considerably, about 5, 10, close to 15 degrees just in the past 24 hours. And that, as we were talking about, was going to definitely be the trend, that the beginning of the return of the dew point would start yesterday, which it obviously has done. In the beginning of the return of the humidity, I should say, in those dew points, and they will remain on the higher side. A little bit of a uh, kind of a dry little batch comes in here Friday night into Saturday, and then uh, the humidity dew points are going to go back up Sunday and Monday, but then hopefully that leads to a little bit of rain. We will have a front moving on through here. Looks like a Tuesday. It's not a big blast, but it'll trim temperatures a little bit, trim some of that humidity, and hopefully squeeze out a couple of showers. 74 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature today up to 80, where we were yesterday, but just a hint more humidity. Not like you're going to be sweating from it, but kind of notice it a little more, and that'll be the situation over the next couple of days with the uh, high temperatures, well, eventually about 10 degrees above normal. Low temperatures will be in the mid 60s by the weekend. And again, hopefully a chance for some rain on Tuesday. Okay, still ahead and right after GMSA, we are going straight to our live stream with continuing coverage of the elections and what we know so far nationally and here in Bear County. Again, that is right after GMSA at seven o'clock. First of all, here's a look outside with live cam. Boy, it doesn't get any prettier than this. Another gorgeous day. Enjoy it, we'll be back. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at the Elections Commission, and as of 1.03 a.m., we now know that 100% of Bear County precincts have reported. We know 1.18 million people registered to vote, and of them, more than 760,000 people actually voted. Now, there were a few hiccups throughout the day, but the Elections Commissioner is telling us that for the most part, it was smooth sailing. They had a few technological issues in the beginning of the day. They even had to remove someone, at least one person, from the polls because they refused to take off their political items. 
them, but for the most part, a good, efficient day of polling. Reporting live from the Election Commission, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, I'm Alicia Barrera, and the big question, who will fill the seat for District 3 Congressional left by Will Hurd? This was definitely a race that kept many voters on the edge of their seat until early hours of this morning. And according to the AP, the race was announced. Republican candidate Tony Gonzalez came out on top over Democratic candidate Gina Ortiz Jones. According to the AP, Republican Tony Gonzalez took the lead by slightly over 12,000 votes. That may seem like a big difference, but keep in mind, District 23 is the largest in Texas and it extends all the way to El Paso and offers also covers some of the Texas-Mexico border. 600 miles to be exact. With Gonzalez win, the Texas border district remains now in the hands of the GOP. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, thank you, Alicia. And folks, as we take a look at the roadways, 410 and Crossroads, no issues. However, in the downtown vicinity, northbound main lanes of 37 at Cesar Chavez, we do have an accident, minor accident, currently in clear stages, blocking the two left-hand lanes. But 21 and Hildebrand, no problems there. Mike? Grab your sunglasses again this morning and look at that sunrise. Now, there's a little bit of fuzz right there along the horizon. We do have some fog to deal with going up I-10 in toward uh, Bernie Stage. Uh, down around Pleasant and a hint of it. Watch out this morning. Sun is showing up around Stinson as well. We are in the 40s right now, and we are going to be uh, seeing a high temperature up to 80 later on today. Thank you, Mike. And we are minutes away from live stream on KSAT.com and the KSAT streaming app. Otherwise, Good Morning America is next. Have a great day.